Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Cass from Cass's Critters. Who else would it be? Come on, this is my channel. But um, in this video, we are going to be talking about why rosy boas are some of the best pet snakes that you can get and why you need one in your collection. Let's get down to it, because there is so much positivity around these little snakes. First things first, I think I should introduce you to my two. This is my pair of Morongo Valley rosy boas. This is the male. His name is Hercules. And this is the female. Her name is Xena, and obviously she's quite a bit bigger than Hercules. And that's pretty rad. Let's get into talking about these guys since they are such incredible snakes. So one of the first things people tend to ask when looking into a new reptile, or maybe their first reptile, is the price and the expensiveness of the animal, which includes the upfront cost and the price of enclosure and care overall. Um, I'm going to start this by saying rosy boas are extremely inexpensive snakes to both purchase and keep. Um, their care is very, 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 very similar to the Kenyan sand boa, which makes it very easy to replicate and very, very, very inexpensive at the same time. So let's start talking about these guys a little bit more in depth besides just their expensiveness because there's so much cool in this fun little package. Look at them. They are just so adorable. Rosy boas are an incredibly small species of boa, and they are one of the two species of boa found in the United States. They are also found in Mexico as well, but we are going to be primarily focusing on the United States localities because they are just rad. Now, rosy boas are, like I said, a very, very small species of boa. They typically max around three foot as a large female. Some localities are capable of getting around four foot, but it is not too, too common. Um, they typically stay around 300 to 500 grams from what I have observed, and that, again, is a really large female. Since they are a small snake, they are obviously going to need smaller prey and a smaller enclosure. So, like I was saying, the Kenyan sand boa bin set up, the sterile boring setup is more than okay for these species since they are fossorial they do burrow most of the time that's what is that's what they prefer so what you can do for an adult female is get a 28 quart bin fill it a few inches with aspen bedding and offer them fresh water bowl fresh water every day and they're pretty much set if I'm quite honest with you they really don't require all too too much since they are fossorial they will be hiding underneath the substrate so a hide really isn't necessary. You, of course, are more than welcome to add them, but they're not necessary. The only thing I would recommend is adding a humid hide when they are going into shed, but again, totally not necessary. It's just something I like to do to ensure that I have a good shed. Back to their expensiveness, or inexpensiveness, I should say. Uh, these are one of the few species of snake that have both localities and morphs, which is super cool, which means there's pretty much something for everybody. This happens to be a morph, oh, or, no, 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 I'm wrong. This happens to be a locality. My bad. These are the Morongo Valley rosy boas. They are from Southern California, obviously Morongo Valley. That is not too, too, too far from me, which is super incredible. But these two are captive bred, which is super important because collecting in the state of California, I do not believe is legal without a permit, and that is not a permit I have, if it's even legal at all. I do not know for sure, as I don't want to collect these guys. These are not something I feel comfortable collecting from the wild when there's captive bread readily available. So yeah. So I think it is quite obvious by the fact that I'm handling both of these at once that they are very, very docile snakes and they can interact just fine with each other, though this is not a species you guys should cohabitate. They are not cohabitable. Just don't do it. It's not worth the risk because they can be cannibalistic as pretty much all snakes can and there can be fighting and it's just not worth the risk but if it is in a controlled environment like this where I am just handling them and making sure that they do not lock up then they are very 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 docile snakes and they can be handled together um, again this is only for the video that's literally it back to what I was saying these snakes are just incredibly docile I would literally let small children handle these if the child knew to be gentle of course and not be rough with the snake because I'm not in the slightest concerned about them biting. I'm more concerned about injuries to the snakes themselves because they are just so reluctant to bite from what I have experienced. They are just super incredible snakes. And I truly, truly adore them and love them to bits and pieces. 
Earlier in the video, I had compared them to Kenyan sand boas in more ways than one, and again, that is pretty damn close to the truth. They are like the Kenyan sand boa in so many ways, including size, temperament, feeding, enclosures, and all sorts of stuff like that. The main difference is just the actual species themselves. The Kenyan sand boa is Gongliophus, and it is from Africa, and these are from the United States. So there is the difference there. Um, yeah. But as you see, like I'm saying, these are just incredible, incredible snakes. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, these are very, very, very easy to house. You can house them in pretty much any kind of setup as long as their needs are met, which is around a 90 degree hotspot, and they do not have a humidity requirement, so just basic household humidity is enough for them, and they will more than likely thrive for you. But like I was saying, they can be housed in a bin cage, they can be in a rack system, they can be in a sterile tank, they can be in a naturalistic tank, or they can be in a bioactive tank. It is really just dependent on you and as long as there is no way for them to escape and their needs are met, they will thrive and be happy for you and they will readily eat for you because these snakes are just so incredible and so, so, so easy to keep. Obviously. I really love them. As for feeding, like I was saying, they are incredibly easy to feed. They are such, such awesome eaters. They will readily accept live or frozen rats or mice. I have had no issues feeding them anything that I have had left over in my freezer or maybe if I have a live rat that I produced and I need to cull the litter down, these guys will readily accept it. They are very, very voracious eaters. They do not miss a meal from what I have experienced. And that is both a good and a bad thing. A good thing is that you do not have to worry about them going off a of feed, but the bad thing is that they are pretty prone to obesity, just like the Kenyan sand boa, and just like boas in general. They can very easily be overfed, and it is a little bit of a sad thing, but at least you don't have to worry about them. Um, Basically, just make sure you do not overfeed them, make sure that you give them the prey that is appropriately sized for their body and themselves, because, yeah, they are not the most active species. A fun fact about the rosy boa is pretty much like any other boa, for the most part, there are some exceptions, but these are a live-bearing species, and it is super incredible. They will typically have between six to seven offspring. Obviously, more and less are possible, but that is the typical litter size. So, I however, there is a few downsides to the rosy boa. One of them being that they are less common than they used to be. I have found it harder to actually find reputable breeders of rosy boas, and that is for a few reasons. One of them being that the state of California requires that you have a permit to breed rosy boas that are native to the state. So the Morongo Valley, the San Diego County, the Coastal, those are all native to California and you do need a propagation permit to breed them. And that permit is rather expensive, unfortunately, but it is only in the state of California that that permit is needed, so it's just here, I guess. I have not looked more into breeders because I have my pair and I'm very happy with them, but I am definitely looking into getting each and every locality of Rosie Boa and hopefully getting a trio of that because they are just so incredible and I would love to start working with these more. Unfortunately, these are not breeding size. Well, I guess that's both unfortunate and very fortunate because at this moment I do not have to give $500 to the state to be able to breed these. But, like I had pretty much said this entire video, these are super duper incredible snake species. They're an awesome, awesome beginner. I would totally recommend them for a beginner. And that propagation permit only includes the rosy boas that are uh, found in the state of California. So any of the other locales that are from Arizona, New Mexico, or Mexico are not included and can be safely and legally reproduced in the state. It is only the rosy boas that are native to California. But again, they are so worth it and I really cannot wait to get that permit because these snakes are just so incredible, so underrated, and they deserve so much more attention that they get. But again, guys, these are just super incredible snakes. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe because there's more videos like this coming out soon. We will see 
Make sure you leave recommendations and suggestions in the comments because I do look at every single comment. Even if I don't like, heart, or respond, I do see your comment, and I do appreciate it. So thank you guys so much, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys. I also forgot to say happy 4th of July, guys. Make sure you guys stay safe and have a lot of fun. Eat out, spend time with family, and just enjoy this glorious day. All right, bye, guys, for real.